Welcome, Welcome to Shape in the City. In the city. I am your girl, Treese. It's Nels. And today we're jumping into our review of season six, mm -hmm. episode five of Love and Marriage Huntsville, Speak Now or Forever Holt. So if you haven't already, please make sure that you've hit the like button. And the subscribe button. And y'all, let's go ahead and just jump into it because we want to get to the nitty gritty. Again, this episode was okay, but we all know the meat and potatoes is always Mel and Martell and their drama. So yeah, let's jump into it and let's get shady. Stormy and Courtney, they're at the warehouse for Canvas Girl Beauty. We're going to call Stormy, Stormy Stacks on Stacks. Because Stormy is trying to stack, but is having issues because her staff isn't on the same motivation. Um, she gets a little bit emotional, giving them, you know, a speech during the meeting. And obviously her and Courtney have been working this from the kitchen table to now a huge warehouse. And they got orders to fulfill, uh, retail stores. And I know she stay stocked. At my local CVS, so I, I get to the. Money. And I think she said that she's getting to grocery stores too. She's going to start doing grocery stores. I wouldn't doubt it. Um, and so yeah, basically, I believe her cousin Junior works for her, and mm -hmm. he's just maybe bringing in some more people. Um, said, I and, need you to do your job first, right? We she got said, to do your full you know, capacity. First of all, I need y'all to do you know hit your max capacity because what I don't like is people being on the phone and you know y'all all doing the Walking same around and right. two people doing a one man job. I said, right. well. So, um, yeah, she said basically for she do that, she needs to see more productivity. And then, um, you know, they need to get these orders filled. I think she said they got two weeks to get it done. Mm -hmm. So it's crunch time. Then Mel. Money making Mel. Money making Mel sat down with her team to see just how booked and busy she is and see if she has time to go to this little Marceau and Tisha thing they got. That she ain't getting no money for. Okay. Now... Um, from the sales, from the sales numbers to the upcoming movie to the international fashion, it don't really sound like she got the time, especially not for free. Mm -mm. Uh, she says that uh, she is going to have a party. She yeah. basically, basically, she's letting us know that um, ain't nothing changed. Okay, ever since she left uh, Martell, she still got that bag. If not, the bag got bigger. And she don't want her kids to feel like anything changed. So right. she's going to throw the same type of party she would have threw if they was together. Okay. For Mariah and um, Malia. And Malia. She's going to have a uh, skate party for them. Apparently their birthdays are one week apart. So she's going to throw it together. And yes, it's going to be a big extravaganza. <sighs> yeah. Because, you know, she rented out the whole damn skating rink. Mel. It's money making mail for a reason. Now. Yeah. Tisha and Marceau are hosting Slutty Vegan in the parking lot. Of I really Florida. want to try them. All the one, the ones, the ones in Atlanta is always like, always. No, I've heard great world. things. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm just that person that don't want to try vegan. Yeah, I just, I just, you know. I heard it. I heard it's amazing, but I like, did hear was amazing. But like, you have to go on a weekday. So, <laughs> uh, so Tisha pitches the idea of having Slutty Vegan in what in their shopping center, along with Black. Uh, Maurice and Kimmy stopped by and they asked whether they think you know the meeting went well uh, the other day. And Marcel feels like it did. And Kimmy brings up how they're trying to basically pitch a rebrand of the old comeback group to them again and try to make it something new. Uh, and Maurice worries if Mel and Martel are going to be able to work together with everything that they have going on personally. Um, and, you know, Tisha's like, they're adults. They should be able to work through whatever they got going on. And we should be able to get to this money and get to this business. But the problem mm -hmm. is you ain't talking no money, Tisha. She then goes on to ask if they want to help fundraise. And that's when Kimmy's like, okay, see, that's where I got to stop you. I got a lot of things that I got to do. Okay. Um, and so what I'm not about to do, or I, I don't mind helping. I want to be there mm -hmm. in some capacity. However, I don't want to be out here 
basically fundraising for your event. And more, uh, I think it was even Marceau that joked and he was like, oh, so you basically feel like we're using y'all. Mo yeah, Maurice was like, well, yeah, he was like, um, he's like, yeah, we're using you. And Maurice was like, yeah, that's what it sounds like, basically. So, and then Tisha and uh, Marceau are in the confessional and Tisha said that she, they sound like the Hulk. She doesn't like that. She needs them to be team Scott. What was crazy to me is Maurice was like, you got some hard decisions to make um, as far as payment. Marceau said, no, I don't. When I'm not paying on? nobody. I said, what? Okay. And then, you know, I love when uh, T uh, Kimmy says, well, you have to understand when people, you know, somebody's investing their time and when people are on different levels, mm -hmm. she's like, we're all on different levels. I said, sweetheart, you cannot. First, no, no, no. And, and I would have said, yes, we're all on different levels. That's my point. No, but yeah, I but, think her, the real shot is Mel is on a level where she's. Yeah, which is different from yours. Right. That's my point. I didn't say, listen, you didn't say, no, we're all on the same level. What you said is we're all on different. You're right. That's my point. We are all on different levels. Mel is up here. So her bag is a little bit, you know, she charges for whatever the fuck she do. And, and I'm, I'm sure even Kim her level is for not. her for her speaking engagements, because I'm sure she goes and probably now goes and talks to women about getting checked for breast cancer Mel, and all of this stuff. I'm sure last she thing, Mel made sure she put all her team together and made sure, look. We mentioned everything I got to do for the next three months. And that's it. There's just that was just three months. She booked and busy. You want to take some time away from that, you're gonna have to pay. It is what it is. Um yeah. so Martel, he is on his Ooh. personal trainer thing, okay? He's trying to help Marceau get back to uh his 2018 weight. Get his body yaddy yaddy together. Apparently, this is an exchange for him helping um Martel pass. His contractor's exam that he he cannot pass. He just he just can't do it. Okay, he just can't do it. Word on the street is in these YouTube streets is that he was arguing with Ariane the other day because he wants her to uh oh let me not use her likeness. He was arguing with Coleslaw the other day <laughs> because because he wants her to uh go take the test for the builder's license <laughs> for him or to take it. Just to take, because you know he was using Mel before, because she got hers and he can't do nothing. So he tried, he tried to go get coleslaw, is what I heard. So I guess even the help. He'd be Mar better off going to Sheree for that, for real. I guess even the help from Marcel didn't help then, huh? Well, he had a whole, a whole teacher, didn't he? And that didn't help. You know what? Listen, Martel is out here kissing ass, talking about how he likes the core six concept. But really, he is more worried about the tea and really wants to know how the hell Mel and Tisha came back together. Uh, Marceau said, you know, he thinks that they just decided to move on. And Tisha got invited to Malia and um, Mariah's birthday party. Now, Martel is just makes Martel so upset. <laughs> he He's is so, so confused as to how she's inviting all these people she really don't even fuck with. But he's not invited. And, you know, he says that he can't even see his kids on a birthday and talk to them and, you know, how he wants to uh, be there with them. Marceau is just floored um, at, you know, the fact that he's still going through this. And really, sir, I don't know why you're so floored because this is going to be your situation if another catch you with your back. With your back out. Your back out. Okay, so... You best to relax and take heed to what's going on. Um, Martel said, you know, that he thinks the only reason why she's acting like this is because he doesn't want, she doesn't want people to um, see her be nice to him. Yeah, that's got to be it. That's got to be it. Got to be it. Mm -hmm. Now, Stormy, she had another meeting with her uh, cousin Junior. This is like two in a week. I'm thinking this again. This I think this is the same week. Okay. Um, because she says like that, she feels like the energy is off between them. She's now he said it's because Courtney been riding him, and Courtney agrees that he does. He was like, I felt was like he was kind of low key getting ready to raise his voice until Courtney came back in that room with. Oh, that absolutely, he, he definitely was. He definitely was. <coughs> For sure, he was. Okay. Um, he 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 shut up as soon as Courtney got in there. Yeah, no, but I saw how he was about to like how he started and the his tone and his voice level. And Even the hand movement, he something like this. Well, let me tell you. I don't remember what right. he said, And then as soon yeah. as Courtney came in that door, he piped down real quick. But Courtney tells him, yeah, he definitely does get his ass because 
he expects more from him because you're the cousin. Um, and Junior said, you know, okay, but your brother work here. And he was like, okay, but he don't ever come in late. So basically, what point are you trying to prove? So him and Courtney go back and forth a little bit, you know, um, talking about how he's not working to his full capacity. Which apparently she feels the same way too because she fired his ass. Mm -hmm. She said, you got um, to She said for business purposes. Um, and he told her, you know, she might not be allowed at the next family reunion after firing her cousin. Well, now Mel is hosting the girls skate party. It's super cute. She says, you know, it's invite only to avoid any drama. However, for some reason, I feel like Martel mentioned that one of the girls told him he can come when he was yes. talking to Marcel through email. Oh, OK. That the mom uh, said that he can come. Oh, so she sees Martel and asks him to step outside. And basically lets him know that um, it's a private event that she's Can throwing. over here, sir? And, and that you're not invited. Um, and so he's like, you know, of course, it's, he's being Martel. He's making a scene at the door. And he's like, I just want to spend time with my daughter on her birthday. And so she's like, she even goes as far as to be like, I'll bring them over after. Yeah, she's, right like, now, on today, she's like, time. later on today is your birthday. It's, it's still her birthday. I'm right. willing to do that, even though it's not your day. It's not your day. I get all the odd years. It's an odd year. Mm -hmm. I don't have to, but I'm doing this to. But then what had me confused is he said that she had them on even years, but she still did the birthdays, but she invited him. So the way what I understood from what I understood about that was that he just still didn't want to throw a party and she just kind of took it over for him. And, you know, of course had him come, but she did it like for him. That's how, it, but but he didn't make it seem the way he made it seem was like, well, you still did it on even years, and she's like, okay, but basically from because earlier she said she he ain't never threw her threw them a party, so if it was even years and it was your year, you could have did the same shit. Like, no, this is my year, but you didn't, and she still, whatever, it, it you know what. I just, you know, again, it's all about the, I want to have control and I want to do what I want to do because we got Listen, kids. Listen, she threatened to call the police. He said he didn't give a damn. He walked his ass right back in there, gave his kids some love and left. Because he, he, he knew Mel was serious. Oh, Because he, he said it wasn't the first, it wouldn't be the first time she called the police on him. She was dead serious. Um, But then she was happy after he left. Yes, and we see her sitting down uh, talking to Kiki and Tisha. And T uh, Kiki's actually surprised that Tisha's even there. And so she's explaining, you know, how her and Mel got to a place where they could sit around and have their kids and, you know, together again and all that good stuff. Um, and then basically... They're coming uh, to Jesus moment. Right. And, and so I was like, well, I should be asking you the same damn thing. Right, like, how did y'all get to this place where y'all are, you know, able... Because at the spa, it wasn't really... Uh, it wasn't for giving what it was supposed to give, relaxing. And so basically, you know, Kiki says that they got things off their chest um, and explains about her and teachers meeting. But she says that she still got some she want to get off her chest with Tiffany. Mm -hmm. especially. She got some words for her. Um, and then, yeah, basically, Kimmy's just I'm not Kimmy. Um, Tisha's just <laughs> like, you know, I don't really understand why, you know, that's such an issue. I think that you should. Basically, let it go. And she's like, no, I want to talk to her. I want and Mel lets her know, listen, I'm having high tea where I'll have an etiquette and um, communication specialist, okay, where you can get all that off your chest respectfully. Right. Kiki is like, in order for it to be respectful, I got to be respected. And I'm not really feeling that from Tiffany. Um, and Mel lets her know, listen, sometimes communication is not talking at all. So let's worry about that at the tea. All right. <laughs> And she was like, you know what? It's time to cut this cake and let's go get these babies and get it together. Because, you know, Mel don't want to be in the mess for too long. Nope. And that was that. And next episode looks like it's going to be crazy. I told y'all, Miss Betty going to come with that. For me, it wasn't even Miss Betty because we saw that in the preview previously. For me, it was what Kiki said to Tiffany. I just felt like these low blows. Listen, if Tiff listen. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I don't know. That well, was I mean, it ain't like Tiffany don't do them and act like she don't know she doing them. At least Kiki's I, just, Kiki's, I, Kiki's I, I feel like Tiff, Tiffany, Tiffany, I feel like she does little things to like get under your skin, but I don't feel like it's really low blows. Like, not, yeah. She I don't feel like it's like, I don't think it's below the belt, especially 
when it, it she don't got like real real serious beef with you she just she just don't like your ways and don't want with you and don't right. understand why you move the way you move but I felt like that to me that was like personal like you know what I'm saying that's some that, well, that's I what, mean you see what she'll do to her own next cousin that's what Tiffany said that's what Tiffany well, said. anyway that's y'all she, that's what she don't mess with her right so y'all thank y'all so much for tuning in to the review love and marriage thank Huntsville, you. season six episode five if you have not already please make sure that you hit that like button you comment you subscribe and you hit the notification bell and make sure that you're following us on all the platforms the tiktok the twitter the facebook and the ig and we will catch y'all next week for another episode of love and marriage Huntsville. have a good week good night